Information from an inmate in the same prison facility as the multi-platinum artist Tory Lanez hit the news claiming that the rapper has been living on the edge and is scared for his life in prison. What has got Tory looking over his shoulders in the prison yard? Well, stick around because we're about to spill some tea on Tory Lanez's prison ordeals. Tory Lanez's prison conditions. Recently, rapper Tory Lanez got hit with three felony charges, assault with a semi-automatic gun, having a loaded, unregistered gun in his car, and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. This all went down because he shot Megan Thee Stallion in the foot at a party back in 2020 at Kylie Jenner's place. Now, he has been sentenced to 10 years behind bars, and it's not a walk in the park for him. Word is, Tory Lanez is pretty nervous about his new life in prison, and he's thinking his fame might put a target on his back. Right now, they've got him holed up in a special area called a administrative segregation, and he's flying solo. According to a report from Page Six, Tory, who's doing time at North Kern State Prison in Delano, California, thinks he's in danger because of his celebrity status. A source shared the news saying, Tory is scared for his life and safety in prison. He feels like he is an instant and direct target because of his celebrity status. And there's another factor that's not working in his favor. The guy's only five foot three, so he's feeling kind of small in a big bad world of real hardcore criminals, including some murderers. He's holding on to hope that his lawyers can keep fighting for his freedom while he claims he didn't do the crime. But let's face it, this whole situation is just a hot mess. Speaking of administrative segregation, this means Tory is being kept away from most other inmates. Administrative segregation, or ADSEG for short, is like a fancy way of saying solitary confinement. They use it to separate certain prisoners from the regular crowd for different reasons, like if they are violent or causing trouble, if they are high profile, if they are tied to gangs, or if they need extra protection. Usually, it means being locked up alone in a cell for 23 hours a day, with not much chance to get out for anything. And I'm, I'm just happy to get out that bullshit county jail. They was hating on the young fly that you heard. Have your 24 hour lockdown, half size cell by myself, no windows, no mirrors. He ain't even seen himself in a whole year, yo. For Tory, even when he needs to shower, he gets escorted and is on his own. And if he wants some fresh air in the yard, he's the only one there. They bring his meal straight to his cell. Right now, he's just hanging in county jail, waiting to be moved to the big prison. North Kern State Prison is where he is currently incarcerated, about 145 miles north of Los Angeles. It's a medium security place with around 4,000 inmates, and it's where they bring in new inmates to the California state prison system. Now, there are some serious worries about Tory's safety because of where he has to stay. You see, North Kern State Prison isn't exactly known for being a peaceful place. In February this year, things got really ugly when a 51-year-old inmate named Ramon Escobar reportedly killed his cellmate Juan Villanueva by strangling him. They charged Escobar with first-degree murder, and he was already serving life sentences for previous murders. Villanueva Nueva, on the other hand, had a conviction for sexually assaulting a 14-year-old. Then, in July, a 25-year-old guy named Ricardo Saldivar was found dead in his cell. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation started looking into it as a homicide case. But it's not just inmate-on-inmate -inmate violence. There have been some nasty fights between inmates and the officers, too, as another former inmate and a convicted sex offender named Joseph Smith got convicted for attacking two guards during a drug search back in July 2020. One of the most shocking things happened in 2015 when a guard got shot while walking around the prison grounds. Luckily, the guards survived the shooting, but they think the shots came from someone outside the prison walls. Tori Lanez's family, especially his dad, is really worried about him, but they've been keeping in touch, doing their best to lift his spirits. According to a source who talked to Page Six, Tori has had some moments where he's gotten pretty emotional. It seems like he's also starting to figure out who his true friends are. He's going to move out of North Kern to another prison, but the authorities still need to pick the right spot for him to finish his sentence. And here's the twist. Tori's told his legal team that he wants to mingle with the other inmates in the new prison once he gets there. What Tory's going through right now is pretty much the usual routine for folks waiting to be moved to a different prison. He's getting set to make the move to another facility, and the California state officials will tell us where he's headed next. Meanwhile, the guards at the LA County Jail check on Tory every half hour, as they do for inmates in administrative segregation. What's interesting is that despite his celebrity status, Tory Lanez doesn't want any special treatment when he gets to the new place. His legal rep, Caesar McDowell, who's also also the CEO of Unite the People, made it clear that Tory isn't afraid to be with the other inmates. He's eager to leave the isolated wing he's in right now. Being in the general inmate population comes with some perks, like more access to programs and support groups, and Tory is all about getting those access. He figures it could help him get back on track faster and head home sooner. Now, being in the general population can be pretty risky, but Tory's feeling confident. He believes he can blend right in, and he's not sweating his safety, even though he's had plenty of folks in his circle fill him in on what prison life is like, but there's a practical side to his choice too. You see, in the LA County Jail, he could talk to his family whenever he wanted. But at North Kern State Prison, that's not an option anymore. In the meantime, Tory's crew is working hard to try and change the situation with his bond 
denial. He even dropped a message from prison for his fans, the Umbrellas, on his Instagram. Hey, yo, Umbrellas, man, what's good? I'm talking to you live from prison right now. In the video, you can see a phone with a record player in the background. With all of these advantages against me, my head has always been held high, man, and I want y'all to know I'm in great spirits. My drive and my ambition is growing stronger and stronger every day, and I'm so proud of how y'all been moving in my support. He also assures his fans that he's still keeping his spirits up, even though things are tough right now. Man, I know this feels like a scary time, but don't be afraid, man. This shit don't spark no fear in my heart at all. Tory also dropped some exciting news for the Umbrellas. He mentioned that he's got a new project in the works and even spilled the beans about the name of the upcoming LP, but the recording cut him off before he could say more. In fact, I'm more prepared than ever. The music, the videos, and all the projects you wanted, they all ready to drop. So let's just start with the one that we want most, the Alone in Crime Deluxe. Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. We've all heard this version of the story about what transpired that night, July 12, 2020. It all started when a Megan Thee Stallion fan account shared a video on Instagram. In the video, Megan Thee Stallion, whose real name is Megan Jovan Ruth Pete, was seen hanging out with Tory Lanez, the rapper and singer, at Kylie Jenner's place in Hollywood Hills, California. They were having a good time, even taking a dip in Kylie's pool. Megan was chatting with Kylie next to the pool, and right after that, Tory Lanez, whose real name is Daystar Peterson, joined them in the pool. He came over to the camera and posed for the fans, but things took a serious serious turn that same morning around 4.30 a.m. The Los Angeles Police Department got calls about gunshots near a house in Hollywood Hills. A spokesperson from the LAPD told Billboard that Tory Lanez, who was 27 at the time, got arrested on a felony charge for carrying a hidden gun in a car. Tory, the Canadian musician, posted $35,000 for bail and got released. TMZ initially reported that there was broken glass on the vehicle's floor and it injured Megan's foot during the whole incident. Then, on July 15, 2020, TMZ published a video showing Megan, the traumazine rapper, at the scene of the incident. She was walking backward toward the police cars, and it looked like there was blood on her feet. Now, let's get into what went down on the night of July 12, 2020, according to the testimonies of all the people involved and eyewitnesses. The rumors about Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez dating started back in 2020 during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Megan, whose real name is Megan Pete, made an appearance on Lanez's Instagram live show, which became a thing because everyone was isolating due to the virus. Megan looked comfortable as she sat in a chair without makeup while Lanez got the viewers excited on his Instagram page. Lanez had started these impromptu Instagram live sessions he called Quarantine Radio in April 2020. It began with random women competing in twerking contests, but soon enough, celebrities like Bryson Tiller, Chris Brown, and Drake joined the fun. The different thing about Megan's appearance on Tori's Instagram live was that she wasn't on a video call with Lanez like other celebs. She was right there with him in the same room. It seems she had invited him to her house. The internet went wild about their supposed close but they broke up shortly before the controversial incident. Megan later denied that they were a couple, insisting they were just friends. However, the events of that night shattered any semblance of a friendship between Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez. Whenever Megan and Tory appeared on Instagram Live together, there was usually some drinking and dancing involved. It was no different on that evening when the two rappers were chilling at Kylie Jenner's house, having a poolside party by the fire on July 12, 2020. Megan later told Gail King in a CBS Mornings interview that she, Jenner, Lanez, and her friends friend Kelsey Harris were just hanging out at the Hollywood Hills house all day. Megan decided to give her fans a glimpse of the party on Instagram Live. She seemed a bit tipsy, her words slightly slurred, and she and Jenner were both rocking tiny bikinis. As they chatted, Lannis made his way over from the other side of the pool and leaned on both ladies' shoulders to say something to the viewers, but Megan put a stop to whatever he was about to say. Around 4.30 a.m., the Los Angeles police got a call about a shooting near Kylie Jenner's place in Hollywood Hills. This happened shortly after Lannis, his driver Megan and Harris had left the party. The stories about what happened in and around the vehicle they were in during those early morning hours after a long day of drinking and hanging out by the pool differ depending on who you ask. Both Kelsey and Megan said that inside the Cadillac Escalade, it came out that Lanez had been involved with both of them romantically. Tori accused Megan of not being honest with Kelsey. In interviews, Megan always called Kelsey her friend from Houston. They became friends back in college when they were freshmen, and they've been tight ever since. Kelsey wasn't just Megan's buddy, but also her assistant. But the last time they hung out was more than two years ago, back on that crazy party night. So Megan and Kelsey first crossed paths with Lanez at the Rock Nation brunch in January 2020. During a court hearing, Kelsey revealed that Megan tried to hook her up with Lanez after the brunch. Megan was kind of into Lanez romantically, but that night, things got messy when they found out he'd been getting intimate with both of them. After the party, Megan and Kelsey hopped into Lanez's driver's car, but Kelsey told the court that the Canadian rapper didn't want to leave and was acting all flirty with Jenner. Then when he went back to grab Megan's slippers, 
things got heated inside the SUV. Lanez decided to join both ladies in the vehicle, and that's when the shouting and name calling started, according to Harris. It was a real mess. That night was a real shocker for Kelsey when she found out she and her best friend were both involved with the same guy. Megan admitted to having a sexual relationship with Lanez, but it wasn't exclusive. She claimed to have kept it a secret from Harris because she knew her friend had a thing for Lanez. However, during a court hearing, Megan revealed that Lanez spilled the beans to Kelsey about their relationship, which caused major tension that quickly spiraled into chaos, and that Lanez tried to pit the two women against each other, hurling insults like bitches and hoes. Harris told the court that she stood up for her friend when Lanez started disrespecting her, and that's when things took a darker turn. Lanez allegedly threatened Kelsey, saying, I'll shoot you, but she dared him to do it. Megan decided to leave the SUV because the argument had become unbearable. At that point, the argument wasn't even with me. Like, the argument was with the two people in the back seat. So I asked the driver to pull the car over, like, I'm done with this. And I should have stayed out of the car. Like, I should have not got back in the car. According to her, Harris encouraged her to get back in the vehicle, but the arguing got even worse when she did. After the verbal clash, things escalated rapidly. Lanez told Megan to dance, and then he suddenly opened fire, shooting at her. So I get out the car, and it's like everything happens so fast. And all I hear is this man screaming, is, he said, dance, he started shooting. Kelsey recounted in an initial interview with investigators that Lanez became enraged when Thee Stallion told him he was only relevant because of a remix with Jack Harlow. The male rapper demanded the driver to stop the vehicle and ordered the women to get out, saying, this is my car, as reported by the Rolling Stone. Megan didn't hesitate to exit the car the second time, according to Kelsey, and that's when she heard gunshots. I get out of my side, and no sooner do you know you start hearing gunshots going off. I looked up maybe about the second or third gunshot. You see Tori? He's now in the front seat. I guess he must have jumped over in a smooth transition and he's leaning over the door, Harris recalled during a September 2020 hearing. Megan mentioned that Lanez was firing shots from outside the car window and she was shocked out of her spine and scared for her life because she had never been shot at before that night. Now Megan's friend Kelsey said Lanez heard her after the shooting, but there's this guy named Sean Kelly who testified for Lanez's side. He said when he peeked out of his house that early morning in July, he saw the two ladies going at it outside Tori's SUV and it was a pretty nasty fight. He claimed that they were pulling their hair and hitting each other hard. Kelly also said he saw a dude who looked like the driver and Lanez getting out of the vehicle. The driver tried to break up the scrap between the women before Lanez stepped out of the car. Then he heard a gunshot. Things went from bad to worse, according to Kelly, with four or five more shots. At another point in his testimony, Kelly said he saw three people ganging up on a woman who was on the ground before they put her back in the Escalade, just as a police car showed up. Kelly wasn't super clear about who pulled the trigger. At different times, he said he saw a woman shooting a gun, but he also mentioned a guy who seemed like Lanez doing the shooting, but he first said he didn't see a gun, just some flashes. Then there's this cell phone video from that morning showing cops telling a limping Megan to step back with her hands up. They told everyone else to get out of the car and lie down. But Megan told the cops she had glass in her foot and said she didn't get shot. You can see her bloody footprints on the ground in the video. On that night, the police arrested Lanez for having a hidden weapon in the car. Both ladies didn't say anything at first, but Megan revealed what happened that night on social media three days later. She didn't point the finger at Tori as the supposed shooter until August 2020, after getting a lot of heat on social media. Megan wanted to clear things up and wrote, the narrative that is being reported about Sunday's morning events was inaccurate, and I'd like to set the record straight. She explained that she'd been shot on Sunday morning in a crime that aimed to hurt her physically. Megan emphasized that she wasn't arrested. Instead, the police took her to the hospital, where she had surgery to remove the bullets. She expressed her gratitude for still being alive and expected to fully recover. Megan wanted to make sure everyone knew what happened on that traumatic night. She mentioned that she was focused on getting better, so she could get back to her music and her life as soon as possible. Megan explained that she was afraid to tell the police the truth because her shooting happened just a couple of months after the George Floyd incident. At first, she told the police that she was hurt by stepping on broken glass at Kylie Jenner's party. I don't remember everything they said to me, but I remember them asking me what's happening, what, what happened to you, and I didn't want them to kill any of us mm -hmm. or shoot any of us. Mm -hmm. So I just said, I stepped on glass. She hesitated to report the shooting to the Los Angeles police because she feared they might respond with deadly force, like what had happened in the recent killings of George Floyd in Minneapolis and Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm scared. All this going on with the police, the police is, is shooting motherfuckers for anything. The police was literally killing black people for no motherfucking reason. Soon as the police tell us all get out the motherfucking car, the police is really aggressive. You think I'm about to tell the police that we 
Because us black people got a gun in the car. Megan also shared pictures of her injury in a now deleted Instagram post, which TMZ reposted. She included a screenshot of the caption where she addressed the rumors and stated she was shot while walking away with her back turned. It wasn't until August 2020 that Megan revealed Tori as the alleged shooter. She went live on Instagram to address the fake stories and narratives created by the public due to her not initially revealing the shooter's identity. Yes, this Tori shot me. You shot me. And you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs lying and shit. Stop lying. Tory got busted first for having an unregistered firearm. Right from the start, his legal team tried to challenge Megan's reason for not reporting the shooting right away. They argued that if she was worried about how the cops would react, she could have told the paramedics or doctors about what happened when they were taking out the bullet bits from her feet. Trial and sentencing. Tori Linez got hit with a serious charge of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and another one for carrying a loaded concealed firearm in a vehicle. He did not admit to these charges, though. He pleaded not guilty and geared up for a trial in December 2022. NBC reported that Linez's lawyer, Jackie Lacey, entered a not guilty plea on his behalf, and he had to cough up a $190,000 bond. Tori Linez didn't stay silent either. He took to Twitter and wrote, the truth will come to the light. Bruh, I just want you to know, bruh. I was just so fucking drunk. I didn't even know what the f was going on, bro. Then on October 13th, 2020, a judge laid down the law and ordered Linez to stay at least 100 yards away from Megan and hand over any firearms he had. Plus, there was a strict no contact rule in place. No calls, no texts, no emails, nothing. Fast forward to July 25th, 2021, during Miami's Rolling Loud Festival. Linez made a surprise appearance during the baby set, but guess what? Megan had just left that stage before he showed up. The prosecutors weren't happy about it, and they decided to prosecute Linez by increasing his bail to $250,000. Then, on December 14, 2021, a detective testified in court that Megan had told him that Lanez shouted, dance, bitch, before firing that weapon. And get this, after the shooting, Lanez supposedly apologized, offered her money, and begged her not to spill the beans. He even mentioned his probation situation. Talk about a mess. January 13, 2022, rolled around, and Lanez's attorney entered a not guilty plea again, as Lanez faced one count of felony assault with a semi-automatic firearm and another for having a loaded, unregistered firearm in the car. Things didn't get any smoother in April 2022. Linez found himself in cuffs in court. The judge slapped him with a $350,000 bail increase. Why? He broke the protective order by talking to Megan directly on social media and spilled some DNA evidence through a third-party Twitter user. DJ Academics posted that the results were inconclusive in finding Tory DNA on the gun or magazine. The judge in Los Angeles County Superior Court had seen enough. He decided Tory Linez was a danger to society and wasn't playing by the rules. See, he'd been told before not to contact or harass Megan or spill any pretrial info, but he expressly violated them. Plus, there were allegations of him assaulting singer August Alsina in Chicago in September 2022, although no charges came from that. Tori Linez wasn't having it, though. He went live on the internet with DJ Academics and said those accusations weren't true, but the judge didn't care. On October 26, 2022, they slapped him with house arrest. So there he was, stuck at home in Miami, Florida, wearing an electronic ankle monitor and counting down the days until his jury trial kicked off on November 28, 2022. Now, during his lockdown, Linez seemed pretty restless and fed up with the whole situation. He was all over social media, letting everyone know how he felt and sharing his thoughts on various things. At one point, he made a post about having time today. People thought he might go live on Instagram to maybe apologize to Megan or give his side of the story. Instead, he dropped a whole 17-track project called Daystar. On Daystar, Tory made it clear he believed he was innocent. In one track called Money Over Fallouts, he rapped, Megan people trying to frame me for a shooting, but them boys ain't clean enough. Elsewhere on the track, Tory raps, girl, you had the nerve to write that statement on that affidavit, knowing I ain't do it, but I'm coming at my truest, and expresses being hurt by Kalani's response. And I thought you were solid too, but look at how you doing me, look at how you doing me, people trying to ruin me, he continued on the track. When Tory Lanez dropped Daystar, it set off a storm on the internet. People were pissed. Many slammed the Canadian rapper for using Megan's shooting to boost his music, while others urged folks not to stream the project. Megan had her say too, using Using her music to address the shooting. In her second studio album, Traumazine, she spat out some lines in a track called Who Me. She didn't hold back, rapping, I feel like Biggie, who shot you, but everybody know who shot me, bitch. Then, on December 6, 2022, Lannis got hit with another charge, discharging a firearm with gross negligence. This was the third felony count against him in the case, and it could mean prison time and even deportation for the Canadian native. Now, during the trial, Lannis's lawyer argued that it was all about two jealous women getting mad when they found out about each other. But these stallions lawyer had a different story.
story. He said Linez exploded because Megan took a shot at his career. Let's rewind a bit to their music careers. Linez dropped his first mixtape back in 2009 and his first album in 2016. A couple of his tracks, Love and Say It, even climbed the Billboard charts. Megan's rise was swifter on the Billboard scene. She released her first mixtape in 2019, and by 2020, her EP was making waves on the Billboard 200. That same year, she released her first studio album, Good News, which included a fiery remix of Savage with Beyonce, hitting number one on the Billboard charts. She was on fire and even appeared on Quarantine Radio. The accolades rolled in, and she snagged a Grammy and a bunch of other awards for her work. But all that success got overshadowed by the shooting case. It got so bad that Megan testified she didn't even want to live anymore. The case took a toll on her mental and physical health. In the courtroom drama, Lenez's lawyer, George Magdazian, had his version of events. He argued that it was Kelsey who pulled the trigger on Megan, and the two women were tangled in a jealous feud over the male rapper. He claimed that Megan got upset because Lenez was getting cozy with Jenner at a pool party that night, and Jenner had to ask her to leave. Magdazian even alleged that Megan and Harris both had some kind of connection with Brooklyn Nets player Ben Simmons. Now, a jail phone call supposedly between Tory Lanez and Kelsey Harris emerged, and it turned out to be a crucial piece of evidence leading to Tory's conviction. Lenez made this call from the Hollywood jail in Los Angeles after the July 2020 shooting of Megan Thee Stallion. I just want you to know, bro. I was just so fucking drunk. I didn't even know what the fuck was going on, bro. I didn't even know what the fuck was going on, bro. Like that. I never do some shit like that, bro. Just that I was so fucking drunk. I just didn't even understand. What Although Lenez doesn't explicitly admit to the shooting or the firearm, during their five-minute chat, he does say he's sorry for shooting Megan. Here's where it gets tricky. Initially, Kelsey Harris told investigators that she witnessed Tori shoot Megan in 2020. However, when she took the stand in December 2022, she changed her tune. She claimed she didn't see Lannis pull the trigger or hear him say, dance, bitch. Harris had been given immunity in exchange for her testimony, and she also had to defend herself against accusations that she might have been the shooter that morning. Things got even more tense as reports showed that both Kelsey and Lanez had gunshot residue on their hands. Kelsey even retracted her earlier statements about Lanez threatening to shoot her that night. However, the prosecutors had a recording of Kelsey's interview from September 2022 where she confirmed that she had seen Lanez shoot her former best friend. But during her testimony in December 2022, Kelsey claimed that what she said three months earlier wasn't entirely true, and she couldn't quite remember her previous statements. She did acknowledge that Lanez offered her a million dollars, but she denied any allegations that it was some sort of bribe. Tori Lanez's house arrest chapter came to a close when a jury delivered a verdict on December 23, 2022. They found him guilty of three felony counts, assault with a semi-automatic firearm, having a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. After nearly eight months of waiting, Lanez faced his sentencing at Los Angeles Superior Court on August 8, 2023. Originally set for January 2023, the hearing got postponed when Lanez brought in new lawyers. Then it got pushed again when his legal team filed for a new trial, but that request was denied in May. The shooting trial had kicked off on December 12th, and it took a day and a half for a jury of seven women and five men to deliver their verdict. On August 8th, 2023, the same judge who had ordered his house arrest sentenced Lanez to 10 years in prison. Before the sentencing, Lanez addressed the court, accepting responsibility for his actions that night and insisting he wasn't a heartless person. Megan Thee Stallion, though absent from the sentencing hearing, had her voice heard through a victim impact statement read by the deputy district attorney. She spoke about her ongoing suffering since the shooting, saying she'd never be the same and felt tormented and terrorized by Lanez's actions and words after the attack. She also made it clear she couldn't bear to be in the same room with Tori again and urged the judge to make him face the full consequences of the law. Since then, both rappers have continued their music careers. Lanez is serving his sentence at North Kern State Prison in Delano, California after being denied bail during an appeal on September 14, 2023. He's also gotten himself a new legal team from a social justice advocacy group called Unite the People, Inc., claiming his sentence was disproportionate and his trial was unfair. The saga continues, even behind bars rap fans.